India has overtaken Germany to become the fourth largest automobile market in the world. The latest global data shows the automobile sales including the passengers and the commercial vehicles in Asia's third largest economy grew by 9.5%, the fastest among the major global markets. Last year, to more than 4 million units was sold, outpacing Germany's 3.8 million vehicle sales, which rose by more than 2.8% in the same period. India's passenger vehicles are demand by led by their utility vehicles. Sales volumes of Mazda Suzuki, Butara, Brezza, and Hyundai Creta remain strong. The new launches in the segment included Tata Nexon, Jeep Campers, Volkswagen Tiguan, and Skoda as Quadig. The government stressed on infrastructures, stricter tab overloading bans, macroeconomics, environmental buoyancy, expected to keep the momentum strong in the 2018. Here are the top 10 lists of largest automobile market in the world of 2017 and 18. Ranking from 10 to 1 Canada 2.08 million Italy at 2.19 million Brazil at 2.24 million France at 2.60 million UK at 2.96 million Germany at 3.81 million and India 4.02 million Japan at 5.24 million, United States 17.58 million, and China with opening 29.12 million of sales. There has been a tremendous recovery of upper percentage for most of the countries in the top 10, except UK, Germany, and United States. While Germany doesn't have any fallen, or Germany has a little bit of 2.8% increase, while United States and UK are getting decrease on the automobile sales by largest numbers of 5 minus 5.4 percentage and United States gets minus 1.6 percentage. So what do you think India becoming the fourth largest automobile market in the world? Can India keep up the momentum in the coming years or India will become sometime sooner than two decades to become the number one largest economy and the number one largest automobile market in the world? There are more proof to validate Indian experiencing uh, internet speed connectivity in this journey of 2016 and 17. According to Internet Analysis Services, UCLA Speed Test Global Index 2017, India is at top among all the countries to have the most improved its broadband services in the last year. India is ahead of China and the US in their ranking. India is in the fifth place, behind the Reunion Island, Ghana and Peru. Having improved the broadband speeds by 76.9% to a national average of 18.82 Mbps. However, India has the top spot among the largest countries in the world to have shown improvement. Higher even the China and the US in the second and the third place. But however, India is not the fastest growing internet speeds among all other countries compared to the overall. Only just improved its speed in the last year or in the physical year of 2017. In addition, the report also shows us in the second place as far as improving India's mobile data speeds in concern with the rise of 42.4% to 8.8 Mbps. On average, the entire world's broadband speeds improved by 31.6% in 2017 to 40.11 Mbps, while the mobile speeds rose 30.1% to global mean of 20.28 Mbps. Mobile and the broadband internet speeds in India have certainly evolved in the last couple of years, said Dougal Suttle, the co-founder and the general manager of UCLA. India still has a long way to go to catch up with the countries that have top speeds around the world. However, we at the UCLA are highly optimistic about the capacity for the growth that is available in the Indian market. And when we look at the trade deficit with India and China, in 2017-16, India's trade deficit with China stood at USD $36.73 billion during the first seven months of the current physical year, April-October, compared to the USD's $51.11 billion on the physical year of 2016-17. The parliament which informed yesterday. The bilateral trade between the India and China stood at USD $50.1 billion during the April-October period. 
as against the USD 71.45 billion dollars in the end year 2016-17. According to the provisional data for April-October placed in the Lok Sabha by the Minister of State and Commerce Industry, C.R. Chaudhari. Increasing the trade deficit with China can be attributed primarily to the fact that Chinese exports to India rely strongly on the manufacturing items to meet the demand of the fastest expanding sectors like telecom and power. While India's exports to China are characterized by the primary and the intermediate products, said Chaudhari. According to the official data, Chinese FDI in India, though growing, has been insignificant compared to its total investment overseas. China presently ranks 17 in terms of foreign direct investment inflows into India. The cumulative inflows from China since April 2000 to September 2017 stood at USD $1.73 billion. So what do you think of India's growing internet speeds in the physical and the last year of 2016 and 17? Will it improve in the coming years? And what do you think of India and China's the trade deficit will it grow more and more as the FDA grows into India or it will be going down by down when India is blocking some of Chinese trade into India. Despite enormous opportunities to do business within Africa, every year the continent loses money to high trade costs. It takes Africa's top grocery chain an average of $20,000 per week to secure import permits to distribute goods in just one country. It takes the same company up to 1,600 documents to send one truck across a regional border. In Kinshasa, Brazzaville, predicted to become Africa's largest metropolitan area by 2025, fewer residents crossed the border than those that crossed the Berlin Wall in 1988. The reason? The high cost of crossing the Congo River and shipping goods at the Malewo Pool. These two examples tell the same story. Despite claiming regional integration as a strategic objective, African countries have yet to reach their trade potential, particularly when it comes to trading with each other. Only 5% of Africa's grain imports, for example, come from regional resources. We have this uh, important uh, rate of growth in the continent. But if we want it to become sustainable, we need, first of all, to boost, boost intra-African trade. Africa do not trade with Africa, contrary to the rest of the region consider it as an element not only for growth but also for development, you know, to reduce poverty, you know, to give employment to our youth. Why aren't Africans being given the opportunity for cross-border trade? Because of non-tariff barriers like staggering transaction costs, complex immigration procedures, limited capacity of border officials, costly import and export licensing procedures, and a lack of investment in trade associations. 10% well, of Africa's trade is actually within Africa. Now, if you look at other regions within the European Union, for example, it stands at about 60%. Trade is actually an engine of growth. And if indeed Africa is to sustain the current growth momentum, which currently stands at more than 5%, we will also need to ensure that we increase the volume of trade you know, within the continent. High transportation costs and logistics also limit access to efficient transport services, especially in rural areas. And clear policies also hamper traders. For instance, seeds released for sale in Kenya may sit stale at the border in Ethiopia because they don't satisfy local requirements. A trader may get his grain to the Tanzanian border only to find that a ban on exports has been recently imposed. There are seasons when we have enough uh, cereals or another agrochemical products in one region when you find there is a shortage in another. But the transport costs are very high. But also where we may develop infrastructure to make sure the traffic can flow. For example, you go to borders, 
uh, you delay in some of the borders, uh, in some cases delaying for three days, four days to cross a border. And mind you, each day, transport is stuck at the border, waiting to cross. You add 1% of the value of the product. That is a cost that Africa cannot afford. But what if African leaders committed to lowering barriers to the movement of goods, services, people, and even investments across borders? What if they implemented current policies and existing legislation that reduce the constraints faced by ordinary traders? Africa at the moment is paying up to 40% extra on transport itself of the goods at the consumer end. When you look at these costs, in the rest of the world, it is an average of 10%. So Africa remains ratchet uh, and competitive, not for insurmountable reasons, but things that we can remove without any additional investment. The studies tell us that if we remove these barriers to trade, if we have these trade facilitation measures, we can have an additional up to $34 billion of additional trade annually. It would mean that traders like these women in DRC could easily sell their goods across the border in Brazzaville without fear of harassment or bribery. This would help to bring Africa's booming informal trade into the formal economy. It's already happening in Senegal and Mali. It would mean more doctors, lawyers, accountants and other professionals could travel from country to country offering consumers cheaper services and a wider variety of skills. It's already happening in Kenya. One of the things that has happened in East Africa, which has made really business easier for us, is that they have been able to harmonize the, they are able to recognize the qualifications from each partner state. So if I'm an accountant in Kenya, they allow me to practice accounting in Burundi. I don't need to go sit for new exams. They see that my qualification in Kenya is good enough for qualification in Burundi or in Uganda or in Tanzania. It would mean more jobs for Africa's 400 million young people, increased global competitiveness, and less reliance on struggling Western economies. And it could mean an end to food shortages across a region where hunger affects nearly 240 million people. The maize this miller in Mozambique imports from South Africa helps keep costs low for consumers in Maputo. We get local maize and we also import maize from South Africa whenever the supplies from the local market are not enough for our milling needs. The imported maize comes through the rail or through the bulking truck. For both these, it needs custom clearance. To make these changes, it will take strong partnerships between countries and regional institutions. It will take a focus away from simply building roads to advancing the reforms that make it easier to travel them. But most of all, it would take a push from African leaders to take action on existing commitments, free up trade, reduce costs, and let Africa trade with Africa. Post your comments below and if you like this video please give a thumbs up and follow us on social networks and subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching, this is WC Daily. Think big, think different. Bye.